They may be impractical, frivolous seasonal toys, but convertibles are far from dead. Quite the contrary, there are no fewer than nine drop-tops available starting at or below the average transaction price for a new car in the United States. That bogey currently hovers just above $33,000, a mark the intra-level Mini Cooper convertible undercuts handsomely with a $26,800 base price. But with an option sheet overflowing with personalization choices, the Mini can be loaded up past $41,000. That's get ahead checked money for a base Cooper convertible, the model powered by a 134 horsepower turbocharged three cylinder engine, not the 189 horsepower, four cylinder Cooper SR test car didn't crack $40,000 but its window sticker bore a rich $37,150 price tag, nearly $3,000 more than a 2016 Cooper S convertible we recently tested. Credit the $5,000 fully loaded package, an amalgamation of three individual option bundles, for most of the inflation. It adds proximity entry, a wind deflector, auto dimming mirrors, heated front seats a Harman Kardon audio system, satellite radio, navigation with real-time traffic information, a backup camera, dynamic damper control, sport seats, and LED headlights. Nifty 17-inch wheels and parking sensors added $500 apiece, chrome exterior trim and a storage package each piled on $250, and the 6-speed automatic replaced the standard 6-speed manual transmission for $1,250. The only worthwhile options, to us, were the cosmetic bits. The attractive Caribbean Aqua Paint $500, satellite grey leather seats $1,750, and cottonwood interior trim $350 gave off a Malibu Barbie vibe, and the car wouldn't look out of place on the crushed gravel driveway of a Malibu, California, beach home. The dynamic damper control, which adjusts the suspension's firmness depending on the selected drive mode, felt similarly worthwhile. It came in the fully loaded bundle but can be had in the less expensive sport package $1,750. The dampers chopped a noticeable amount of, well, chop from the often abrupt tried quality we find in minis, a consequence of their short wheelbase, run flat tires, and a suspension tuned to prioritize handling. The small for our modern Mini 17-inch wheels certainly helped the sport package settles for 16 inches, and we'd avoid the 18-inch option. The ride might have felt even smoother if not for the standard run flat tires, which slap over highway expansion joints and medium-sized dry leaves. Mini is as Mini does whether or not you exercise self-restraint upon encountering the Mini's online configurator, which boasts over 10 million possible build combinations, the Cooper convertible has a relatively light curb weight, firm suspension tuning, and quick steering. Even its above the average objective performance measurements, 0.84 grams on the skid pad and a 163 foot stop from 70 miles per hour, don't fully convey the Mini's eager puppy dog character on the road. Similarly, the 7.5 second 0 to 60 mph time doesn't tell the turbo three cylinders whole story. The little engine feels breathless only for the first foot or so after accelerating from a standstill, after which the 162 lbft of torque hits and propels the Mini forward with gusto. Our test car's six-speed automatic transmission is the ideal boulevard companion but also grabs gears quickly and intelligently in mid-normal and sport modes green mode dials its responses in the name of fuel economy. Our sole complaint about this transmission is its slack of steering wheel shift paddles, to manually select gears in the non's Cooper automatic, you're stuck rocking the shift lever fore and aft. Going nuts with options also won't ameliorate the Cooper's inherent miniisms, weaknesses that are exclusive to the brand's modern ways. Our convertible's notably flexible structure accentuated the symphony of interior creaks and rattles that's fast becoming a hallmark of modern minis, and this example had just 1,600 miles on its odometer. Unlike in other minis, here you can lower the roof, 
and the racket flies away with the wind. This solution requires some effort, as the power top takes 18 seconds to lower and requires a switch mounted on the windshield head to be held down during the entire process. Lowering the top using the key fob, from outside the car, is slicker and requires less of a reach. Interior ergonomics are as haphazard as in other minis, with switch gear buried in hard to see locations and an armrest installed without consideration to where the human elbow is located. Quirks such as the shaped housing for the central display in the bottom inch trunk lid that swings open like a pickup truck's tailgate are almost endearing, as if many as German corporate benefactors searched for ways to grasp at plucky British car stereotypes without building a car that regularly lunches its electrics or hemorrhages oil. Others are less successful, like how the Cooper's switch gear appears to have been shot at the dashboard from a blunderbuss, odd given how the original Mini's cabin was a model of simplicity. It was cute in the first BM revived Mini in 2001, 15 years on, the cheekiness is somewhat less charming, and even the fussy Fiat 500C's interior works better. The Volkswagen Beetle's functional cabin layout is almost boringly intuitive by comparison. Sunny side up these miniisms may dissuade many, Aside from the most ardent cuteness chasers or those who require top-down style and driving satisfaction, which is a shame because the Cooper is otherwise well designed. The size increase of the third generation, BM developed Cooper imbues even the convertible variant with surprising utility. Its 4.1-inch overall growth spurt in length and its 1.1-inch longer wheelbase help accommodate medium-sized humans in the back seat as long as the front passengers are of similar size and nobody minds that the power top mechanism forces the two rear seats close together, pinching shoulder room. With the top up, there's 7.6 cubic feet of cargo space, enough for a carry-on roller bag and a small duffel. We're entertained by Mini's Openometer, a digital chronograph function that tracks, down to the minute, how much time the roof spends in its lowered position. More practically, we enjoy the cloth top's sunroof function, which allows the panel above the front occupants to slide open without folding down the entire top. The Mini is undeniably adorable, and it delivers a far sportier driving experience than equivalent base model versions of its retro rivals, the Fiat 500C and the Volkswagen Beetle. Those shopping for a budget convertible could do well here by skipping most of the option list. Anyone willing to spend as much as this car's sticker price, though, would be better advised to start with a Cooper S.